House of Nicaea uh, was an effort by, by Constantine to control the people through military and through religion. And if y'all don't know who Constantine is, he was the first Roman emperor to convert all of his people to Christianity. So he was trying to indoctrinate everybody into Christianity. And it was that. You can see, I haven't uploaded in 12 days. I've been doing my research, reading my books, and also working on that project that I told y'all I was working on. In the research that I've been looking at and the book that I've been reading, it's been talking to me about Jesus and, you know, that whole story and everything about the history surrounding that. And I just wanted to share with y'all what I've learned so far. And y'all just tell me in the comments what y'all think. This was the real crucifixion of Christ, all right? This, these are axio, axio, axiotonal lines in our body. Now, with that shield mutation that we just saw, it creates very specific blockages of energy lines in the body. It crucified the inner Christ, is what it did, the inner Christ, the inner Christ grid. It crucified our ability to run D12 Maharada Christos to activate our flame bodies and our silver sanctum. So the real crucifixion story was about this. And the funny thing is, even historically, the man called Jeshua, the man who was Jesus Christ, did not die on the cross. He was not killed, he ascended. And they didn't tell anybody that because they wanted to build a martyr that people could follow and then think it was okay that they got martyred too. This was what the real crucifixion was about. And it's really sad because we've been literally walking around. The reason the story was done, the palm chakras were messed up. These became the nails in the hands, the blocked chakras in the hands. We lost our ability to run interdimensional frequency through the palms that used to be natural. We used to be able to wave our hand to manifest things. You could just make a standing wave by doing that and knowing what frequency to pull. Can't do that anymore right now. They were the same thing. Feet chakra were blocked. The nails in the feet. The stab wound. There's a whole set of implant networks in through here that block the spleen, which is an interface between the etheric body and the flame body levels and your physical anatomy. You have the crown of thorns, and this is about the worst one, the pineal blockages that, see the little dots? They're the ones that are blocked. They block literally off those currents out of the brain. Our brains literally shrunk once this was done. The brain size and function, it shut off parts of our brain. That's why science tells us, boy, we don't use very much of our brain right now. No, we don't, because it was shut off at the main switch. <laughs> what we're doing as we work with healing the templates is we're opening these centers back up and we're beginning to, um, now, with the Phoenix Workshop, the new information is, um, I have a feeling it's going to be really exciting because they're teaching us, literally, of having to di do diagrams of brains, like uh, correct ones, like uh, anat anatomically correct, where we can see where certain things are in the brain that science doesn't know are there yet because they're the things we're going to be activating and you have to see how they interface directly with what parts and glands that science knows is there. But we're taking the crown off and we're getting down off the cross and it's about time. <laughs> um. <laughs> the Bible once upon a time was a holy book. It was a piece, a piece of the Emerald Covenant, CDD plate translations, the Maharada text. They took it and ran with it and made a story that wasn't even true. They tell us the, the crucifixion of Christ story. Cruc Christ was not crucified. We've gone through this in, in some of the other workshops. He was not. He ascended. Not because he died first, but because he finished his mission here and he couldn't do anything more in that time frame. And it was time to leave. He knew he ascended through the Ark of the Covenant, which is a portal passage that comes up through Giza, in, in the Great Pyramid in Giza. And they created a story and they made Christ a martyr they took some of his teachings because they knew that they were loved because he had started to bring the Emerald Covenant teachings back into the civilization at the time. They took the idea of Christ, they took the history of the man named Christ, twisted it up into the history of another man who was one of their hybrids that was supposed to get back on, you know, bring his people back into the Emerald Covenant and didn't. And they created this whole story, this whole Jesus, Mary, and Joseph story that was agreed upon by even the competing groups, be they, you know, whatever, if they were Protestant or, or Catholic or whatever, it didn't matter. There's one story that was agreed upon. This particular biblical story, what do we do with what happened in the biblical times? Because for them it was a big problem. There was this guy with what they considered a big mouth who went around and he had his memory back and he talked about the Emerald Covenant and he talked about 
ascension. And he talked about stargates and about the Templar. And he talked about the times that were going to come when there was going to be a big battle. A big battle between the fallen angelic races who were going to try to get the planet. These were the things that were in Revelation and stuff originally. They told you the whole story. Now they all encoded it. You know, now it's all encoded. And hells. But perhaps the main reason for excluding these books was the desire to establish a unified and orthodox version of Christianity that could be defended against heresy and dissent. We know that Jesus wasn't his actual name. They changed his name. They changed the story of how he ascended. They changed... They took books out of the story. Let's just let's just go over some of the stuff that they took out of the books. So everybody's in this uproar right now about the whole thing with Disney buying the rights to the Bible because people are starting to notice that scriptures are being removed. Then other people are like, oh, wait a minute. No, those scriptures were already being removed, right? And the main one everybody's talking about is Matthew 17, 21. Now, this is the scripture right here, okay? This is the King James Version. Even the Bible that I have that I was reading this morning myself, I, you know, grew up reading the NIV version. It does not have the scripture in there. But this scripture right here talks about casting out demons through prayer and fasting. And it says that there are some that can only be cast out by prayer and fasting. It's so interesting to me that they're taking out the scriptures around spiritual warfare. So I have been reading the apocryphal text or the books that were taken out of the Bible, specifically the apocalypse of Moses. And not only does it tell the true story of Adam and Eve, it sheds a lot of light on the Nephilim, which are giants. And it just goes to prove that if you are someone who follows religion, you need to read these books. And if you are unfamiliar with the Apocrypha, these are not works or books that were forgotten in modern day Bibles. They were actually taken out by a single religion that I will not name for controversial reasons, only because they did not align with what they wanted people to know. They go into detail as to what happened between Satan and God. And now I am on the story of Adam and Eve and what they really did, what really happened, and how they were dealt with. If you are interested in learning about the Apocrypha, you can go to some of my videos where I talk about each one in book by book, but this specific one is gonna be about the Apocalypse of Moses or the true story of Adam and Eve. Now, if you are familiar with the real story of Adam and Eve, it goes as Adam and Eve were in this sanctuary and garden and God made them so pure and a serpent came and whispered to Eve, Eve ate the apple, and so did Adam. And in doing so, they realized that they were given all this knowledge and they were shamed because they now know that they are naked, which God tried to hide them from. And that's pretty much where the story ends. That is the watered down version that is told in multiple religions. To First of all, we're gonna pause on that and I'm gonna show you something that I just learned today too about Adam and Eve. I reread Genesis. God never told Eve not to eat the apple. That is number one. I can't believe y'all been sitting around lying and telling these folk tales. Eve wasn't even created yet. Eve wasn't. Don't make me mad. Number two is nothing happened when Eve ate the apple. It's when Adam took a bite and then both of them had the knowledge of good and evil. Y'all still following? And, and now I'm finna go Bible on you. Just in case you didn't believe me thus far. Anytime God addressed his commands and say, hey, I told you not to eat from it. He says you. He doesn't say y'all. He doesn't address both of them. He addresses Adam and Adam only. Excuse me. He addresses the man and the man only. I just wanted to share a little controversy on um the Adam and Eve story, the bite and apple. So, yeah, let me just get into the rest of the video. I'm going to tell you the real story are aware that Adam and Eve created Cain and Abel and Cain and Abel were the sons that one killed the other out of jealousy but what people don't know is that Adam and Eve actually had 30 sons and 32 daughters. Cain and Abel were brothers but they also had twin sisters. In the apocalypse of Moses, Adam and Eve are speaking to their daughters, these four specific bloodline of them, and telling them the story of when God casted them out of the garden. The first thing that is not really 
correlated well when it comes to the story of Adam and Eve is why Eve ate the apple. It was not because a snake came to her. In the Apocrypha, it says that the actual Satan came to her with a serpent tongue and told her to eat the fruit. So the devil whispered to her and betrayed her and said to eat the fruit and she ate the fruit but when she did so she promised the devil with the serpent tongue that she would also make Adam eat the fruit. So once she ate the fruit everything in the garden died except for the fig tree where she got the fruit from and this is where she found the clothes to cover herself. A lot of people don't realize that Eve was by herself and Satan took the form of another angel, but he used a serpent's tongue to persuade her to eat the apple. And when Adam came back, she did the same to Adam. And that is why Adam ate the apple. After they ate this fruit, God came with them to the Archangel Michael and he came to them in a chariot within one hour and he bestowed upon them their punishments. God banned them from the garden because not only did this apple let them know that they were naked, what that really was, was they found lust and they fornicated. So because they fornicated, God told them he is banning them from the garden and he also gave them their own separate punishments. Adam and Eve go through this eternal cycle of Satan tricking them and then them dying because of it, right? Like this whole life cycle because Adam and Eve lived for 950 years. Also separated and that's when she gave birth to Seth, Cain, and Abel as well as their two daughters which did not know anything that their parents did. The story of mermaids actually makes complete sense and the book of Enoch kind of explains why mermaids came about and where they came from originally. So you know how Noah was said to take two of every animal and put them on the ark before the flood happened? And that's where Enoch comes in. Enoch is actually the great grandfather of Noah. Also, this will be the next episode on my podcast. You can find it on Spotify under That's Insane with Asha. So in the beginning of the book of Enoch, it talks about the fallen angels, the Nephilim, and basically what brings on the flood that wipes out the earth or the reason that Noah needed to build this ark. Specifically, the book of Enoch talks about good watchers and bad watchers. The bad watchers were those who abandoned their post, watching over humans, came to earth and began to fornicate with animals and humans. In the book of Enoch, it also talks about how these fallen angels shared secrets with humans that were not supposed to be shared. In doing so, they taught mortal women how to use makeup and even the discovery of jewelry, which then in turn made them more appeasable and more beautiful to the watchers and created more fornication. And in turn, this is why the flood was sent and it was to wipe out everything on earth that had become corrupt. Basically, you have the Nephilim or giants down here eating humans because they were a ghastly. They were not friendly giants and they were said to be over 450 feet tall. And then you had fallen angels fornicating with mortal women. And this is why the flood was sent because he said, hey, we're just going to take everybody out. You know what happened because of that flood? Sirens or mermaids. So when the fallen angels came down, they didn't just fornicate with humans. They also took 200 of each animal and tried to crossbreed. That could explain why you see mermaids. Biblical references to mermaids are actually sirens. I want you to look at this book of Enoch, chapter 19, verse 1. And it says, And Uriel said to me, Here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women and their spirits, assuming many different forms, are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrificing two demons as gods. With all this research I have done about mermaids and everything else, there is no way that they cannot be real. The book of Enoch was taken out of the Bible in the 4th century. And although many people believe that it was taken out because it wasn't accurate to the original scriptures, others speculate that it might have actually been taken out because it talks about a history of humanity that's not currently accepted. In the book, it talks about how there was a group of angels known as Watchers that began stepping out of line a little bit. They began teaching humans things that humans weren't meant to know at that time, like makeup, astrology, and how to create weapons. Furthermore, these angels began to lay with human women, and as a result, giants, also known as Nephilim, were born. The book gives an entirely different account of human history and talks about things like why the sun, stars, and moon move the way that they do, the shape of our world, 
and even where the watcher angels are currently. This 1775 Bible shows that March is actually the first month of the year, and Sunday, yes, you heard right, is the first day of the week. Take a look. So this right here is the Bible from 1775 telling us at the time that we used to have 13 months. The first month of the year is March! Look at all the way to the end, guys. There's 13 months. 13 months. First day of the week, Sunday. Second day, Monday. Look at that. Seventh day or Sabbath, Saturday. All right, y'all. That's a little bit of what I got so far. Information that I have found about the Bible and stuff like that. Hope y'all got a little education today as I was learning too. And I hope y'all have a good rest of y'all day. Thank you for watching this video and thank you for all the love and support. I can't wait to show y'all the project that I have been working on. And I love y'all. Stay dangerous.